Welcome, John, from the driveway garden. And we have some spring thinking going on and some seeds of thought, and here are the seeds. So we want to talk about several things, and I've been getting a lot of comments and statements on GMOs of all things, genetically modified organisms. But we're going to talk about GMOs, hybrid seeds, and open pollinated seeds. Now, GMOs, you just aren't going to find in retail. That's almost exclusively for farmers who are, who are growing alfalfa, corn, soybeans, and many of those other large grain type crops. So those are specifically out there. You just aren't going to find them here. And even on their seed racks over here, it says non-GMO. So that is not a concern, even though I've been getting a lot of questions. And of course, those genetically modified organisms, I find with a fair amount of reading, are not really uh, controlled very well. Or do, they don't have a lot of real standards of testing in regards to when you ingest a bunch of them, what that does for you or doesn't do for you. And so to me, it's just an unknown, maybe even a little scary. But you don't have to worry about that because there's so many choices with the hybrids and the open pollinated varieties. So just stay away from GMOs. Look for your grain products when you're shop shopping. Um, even uh, like mushroom, white button mushrooms are GMOs, some of them. So there's more out there than you think of those in the grocery store. But of course, growing your own is the big deal. And that's what we're trying to do because we want to get get the one, grow the ones that are most delicious, if I can say it, and, and most nutritious. And that's what we're looking for. So let's take a look at those. Man, I love Brussels sprouts. Gross. What? Hey, these are great. This is called Long Island. What we're gonna do is talk about hybrids right now. Now this one's an open pollinated, but Jade Cross would be a variety of hybrid Brussels sprouts. Now hybrids are different how? This is something that takes over time. What they'll do is they take two plants, two Brussels sprout plants, and over typically over years, uh, will find the best plants with the best characteristics, observe them, and after usually two, three, four, five years, it could be varying times, um, they will uh, then finally cross-pollinate them. Now that's done mechanically, but it's not a manipulation like a GMO. They're still totally natural, GMOs, not natural. So they take a period of time to come up with hybrids. Typically on the package, you'll see a designation meaning F1, and it simply designates the generation, because you can have F2, F3. Typically, it will be F1. And then you'll know it's a uh, hybrid variety. And of course, these right here uh, aren't marked F1. So if you see no F1 on there, typically on the back of the pack, they'll indicate what it is exactly. So hybrids are great. I grow a lot of different hybrids. I've grown J. Cross Brussels sprouts before, a cool weather crop, which you want to start early and plant early. I, some of these I plant even uh, late April, and they take, they take to cool weather well. So the hybrid is a great way to go. I've got some beautiful tomatoes and hybrids. And, and just remember, those are totally natural. So there's no question there. It's just a pollination manipulation, if you will, of great characteristics. So don't be afraid to use hybrid varieties. They really work well. So here we have white Lisbon onion, great onion. This is open pollinated and you can even see, I don't know if you can see it on there. It says open pollinated, you got it, Brandon? open pollinated. So these are designated well, you can't go wrong. Open pollinated, F1. If it doesn't say F1, it's open pollinated. So what's the biggest difference between those two? Now hybrid seeds, since they're uh, crossbred, uh, don't have true seeds. In other words, if you plant that seed from the hybrid, you aren't gonna get what you have there in that plant. You'll, you'll get some offshoot and something undesirable and that's usually the case. I've tried it and they don't work. And so F1 hybrids, you can't save seed. But for these, you can save seed. I did this with this particular one, Lisbon, a bunching onion. And I did it because these are notorious for going bad early. In other words, you can't save onion seeds super long. And you have to get usually a bunch of them together to get some nice cross pollination to get all the characteristics in there. But when I germinated my home save seed, pretty much 99% came up. You know it's fresh seed, you know it does well, and so that's the difference, a big difference between hybrids and open pollinated. So these are great and it gives you opportunity to try something new by saving seed if you wanna do that. So you got your GMOs, we got our hybrid varieties, 
and we got open pollinated. The only thing we have to worry about <clears throat> are hybrids, open pollinators. There's tons of choices. And then there's a couple more categories in general we should talk about, and that's coming next. Okay, here we got cool weather crops. And we want to plant these really about mid-May, and then we'll put them in the soil about the end of June. And the reason we do that is a lot of these will bolt or seed if you plant them early on and plant them in April. Now, I do some of that because I simply extend some of my harvest and I don't mind replanting. But your best method with cool weather crops, like I said, in mid-May, plant probably about the end of June. And then you should be able to avoid the bolting or the seeding. And when they do that, they just simply do not produce. So the other thing, of course, is continue to look at the information on the seed pack because you want to know uh, from when you plant it on the ground, in the ground uh, how long it takes to get produce. Look at that information, follow that kind of timing, and you can do pretty good with cool weather crops. One example I will give you is spinach. I let that go all through winter. I harvest up until the end of June. It will bolt or seed, won't produce anymore. Then I have new plants that I started that I get in the ground. So I, once it gets a little more size, I can continue to harvest spinach. You can do that with many of these cool weather crops. So you can really extend the season. Okay, now we have warm weather crops. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is they simply plant them in the ground too early. And what's too early? Well, you gotta have an idea when that soil's warming up. But I think a good timing is pretty much end of May, beginning of June in Michigan. And by that time, usually your soil is warm enough. Uh, pay attention again to your germination time on there and also uh, from when you put your seedling in, seedling in to when you get produce. And uh, then you can work with your timing and what you need to do. One great example I have from last year is a, a squash called Cube of Butter. This thing produced so well, was so vigorous. I got well over 30 fruits off of that uh, together. And it was just an incredible producer. So you can have, it really is kind of exciting and neat to see what you can produce. And if you follow this information and look at these details, you can do this too. You know, I use this product right here. It's by Dairy Dew. It's a seed germination product uh, mix, and it works really well. And I've used several through the years, and they work pretty good. But when I was in England this past summer uh, with Charles Dowding, he has a method which I want to show you where it's 40% my compost, 40% bark finds, and 10% worm castings. And that's what we're going to do next is worm castings. We're going to show you how to build the bin, get it going. This is really not a hard process, but it's really nice to see how to do it step by step. So hit that notification button so you won't miss it.